Hello, this is your guy Pat Obi, and this is the final part in my ARDL series. And I'm going to show how to determine if there are short run causal effects among the series. The key question addressed here is regardless of whether we have co integration, is there nevertheless short run uh, Granger causality? So, in pursuit of that, I specify the ARDL short run causality model right here for three variables. Uh, showing the two regressors right here. And I have three variables here the log of tourism arrivals, the log of the Chicago Broad Options Exchange buy right index, and the log of Chicago Broad Options, Options Exchange volatility index. And the number of lags allowed in each of these equations is one, as you can see right here. All right? And this is pursuant to my lag selection uh, result determined earlier. And what you see in red is exactly how the equation is going to be fed into E views, where D represents the uh, difference operator that you see right up here. All right, so this is the dependent variable, D lar, and this is a constant right here. And that, that's uh, uh, the difference value of the dependent variable right here. And this is the contemporaneous term of the first regressor LBXM and this is a one period lag and this is the current value um, contemporaneous uh, our term that is of the second regressor LVIX and this is its uh, one period uh, lag right there. So this is going to be copied and fed into eViews. Before we get started I wanted to make a note of a couple, a couple of important things. Uh, first is whether or not there is co-integration we should test for short-run causality as I said earlier. And second is short-run terms go with the difference operator as you see right here. right? So And thirdly causal impact is going to be measured by the t-statistics of the coefficients of the short-run terms. So that's going to be the uh, lambda, delta 1, delta 2. And we're going to be using the optimal lag length determined at the outset. And finally, where there are several lags for each regressor, we can perform a joint F test of their coefficients using wall test. So we can infer on composite short-run causality if we want to. All right, so now there are two separate cases in which we can ascertain if we have short-run causality. Case number one here is where we have co-integration. And in that framework, we can also examine the um, dynamics, the short-run dynamics, in addition, of course, to the error correction mechanism. Now, the second one is where there is no co-integration and therefore no error correction mechanism. So in this in this situation we're going to have to completely specify the ARDL short run model as I write here an example of which is what you see right here. All right. So let's get on with the, with case number 1. And for that I'm going to go to um, eViews real quick. So in eViews, all right, this is the uh, error correction model I ran earlier and this is actually going right back here to estimation this is the ECM right here and that's the error correction term right here and so when I click OK I have this result that you see right here which of course includes the all-important error correction term with this coefficient and with has the correct sign negative and also it is statistically significant so we know there's going to be convergence by and large the point here, though, is uh, is uh, the focus here rather is on the short run terms, and these are their coefficients, and these are their t statistics, and even more importantly, their p values. So now, for example, uh, we can see here for um, LBXM that the coefficient here is statistically significant, so we know that there is. Um, short run causal effect running from LBXM to LAR. Similarly, we can see here for LVIX that the contemporaneous term is statistically significant at any conventional level and because this coefficient is positive we know that there is causative 
um, that there's positive causal effect from Elvix to Lara. Bear in mind that these coefficients are least squares estimates. All right, and so what that means is that you're going to have to interpret them accordingly. For example, the coefficient for LBXM suggests that a one unit change in LBXM leads to a 1.21 unit change in LAR in the same direction because this is positive. Likewise, I, if we look at this number right here, it tells us that a one unit change in LVIX results in a 0.25 unit change in LAR. You can also say for that matter that a change in LVIX results in a 25.5% change in LAR in the same direction since the variables are measured, my variables are measured in log form. Now I do have to hasten to add that one important benefit of measuring financial and mini economic time series in log form is the use of percent as a way to describe these elasticities right here. Additionally, logarithmic transformation, you might already know, ensures better distributional properties of the time series. All right, finally, and as I mentioned earlier, you can also conduct a joint test of significance of the coefficients of all lagged values of each regressor. So, for example, if you want to uh, do a joint test of uh, uh, LBX uh, AM, you know, the contemporaneous uh, term as well as the lag term, and these are their coefficients, the first thing we have to know, though, is the numerical order of the coefficients. So, for example, the intercept, the constant here is C1 and this is C2, this is C3, and this is C4. We want to catch them right here, C3 and C4, because they are assigned to the contemporaneous term of uh, LBXM and the lag term. So for that, I'm going to go to View and Coefficient Diagnostics and Wall Test. And I'm going to write C3 equals C4 equals 0. There you have it. That's my null hypothesis, which, as this result shows, should be rejected in favor of the alternative that jointly um, LBXM has an impact, has a causal impact on our dependent variable. All right, so that's really it. And case number two is where we would have to, if there is no co-integration, we would have to directly estimate the short run model. So for that, you go to quick and then estimate equation right here, and then you list that short run equation. Um, so I'm just going to go here real quick and then I'm going to copy it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the second one right here. I like this. All right. So I'm just going to copy it to make it quick and easy for me and paste it right there. And then I click OK. It's, it's the least squares estimation thing there. And voila. All right. That's all there is to it. And you have your coefficients and you have their p values right here, which um, you can interpret accordingly. So that's all she wrote, actually. Um, moving real quickly, I'm going to give you a quick sum of everything we have uh, uh, touched upon so far. First of, we perform bounds tests on the coefficients of the long run terms to determine if co-integration exists in this ARDL bounds test specification. Second is, if there is co-integration, all we do is to specify and run the error correction model and two, among other reasons, as I note here, to determine the speed of, of adjustment. And the speed of, of adjustment is this phi. So the error correction representation will get rid of this after we've confirmed uh, co-integration. And then we're going to rep replace it with uh, the lagged values of, uh, error, of the error correction term. And then observe this guy right here, phi. The test statistic of the coefficient of the error correction term, this phi right here, tells us if there is long-run Granger causality in addition to giving us information on the speed of adjustments to long-run equilibrium. Bearing in mind that it should be negative and statistically significant. Alright, and then fourthly, 
Note, however, note also I should say that if there is co-integration, in addition to examining long-run causality in the context of these guys right here, we can also make inference on short-run causality as I have just demonstrated and we do so by examining the T statistics of the short-run coefficients and that's going to be lambda and delta. Nevertheless, if there is no co-integration, we, we, we can simply estimate the RDL short-run model to determine if there is short-run Granger causality and in which case all we're doing is just estimating this model right here excluding what you see in the red box and of course excluding the error correction representation right there and then we're just going to make inference based on lambda and delta. Alright, so that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoy this presentation. I appreciate your support. Let's keep learning.